in the heart of a bamboo grove nestled amongst jade-green hills, lived a young acolyte named Kai. Plagued by self-doubt, he sought guidance from the wizened Zen master, Matsu. Master, Kai confessed, bowing low, I feel lost and unsure of my worth. How can I discover my true value? Matsu smiled gently, his eyes twinkling like pools of ancient wisdom. Go fetch the largest stone you can find in the garden, he instructed. Kai returned, his brow furrowed with effort, a boulder clutched in his arms. Now, Matsu continued, take it to the village market and try to sell it. Kai's confusion deepened. But master, who would buy such a common stone? Matsu merely raised an eyebrow, his lips a silent curve. With a heavy heart, Kai ventured into the bustling market, the cumbersome stone weighing not only on his arms, but also on his spirit. He approached a weary farmer, the stone scraping the cobbled path. Excuse me, he mumbled. Would you be interested in this stone? The farmer grunted, barely sparing the rock a glance. Two coppers, he scoffed and that's being generous. Kai's stomach lurched. Disheartened, he peddled his stone to a baker, a cobbler, even a silk merchant, but each offered a pittance, a mere fraction of what he felt his worth should be. Dejected, he returned to Matsu, the stone feeling like a lead weight in his hands. Master, he said, voice thick with despair, no one sees my true value. I am nothing more than a common stone. Matsu listened patiently, then led Kai to a serene garden hidden behind the temple. There, nestled amidst cherry blossoms and trickling streams, stood a magnificent museum. Take the stone, Matsu instructed, and offer it to the curator. Hesitantly, Kai presented the stone to the wizened curator. The man examined it with keen eyes tracing its weathered surface with delicate fingers. A slow smile spread across his face. This, he declared, is not just a stone. It is a testament to time, a canvas sculpted by nature itself. It whispers of ancient mountains and forgotten rivers. He turned to Kai, his eyes gleaming. For this piece of timeless beauty I offer you two thousand gold coins. Kai's breath hitched. The stone, once a symbol of his worthlessness, now shone with newfound value. He looked back at Matsu, who simply nodded, a knowing glint in his eyes. You see, Kai, Matsu spoke, his voice as soft as the falling petals. Your worth is not inherent, but perceived. It depends on the platform on which you stand, the eyes that behold you. In the wrong place, even a diamond may be mistaken for a pebble, but in the right setting, even a common stone can be a treasure beyond measure. Kai understood. His true worth wasn't defined by the opinions of others, but by the way he chose to present himself, the environment he cultivated, and the light he shone within. He realized that he, like the stone, held within him a universe of potential, waiting to be discovered by the right eyes. From that day on, Kai carried himself with newfound confidence, his spirit as polished as the jade hills that surrounded the temple. He honed his skills, embraced his passions, and never again let self-doubt dim his inner light. He knew that his true worth, like the ancient stone, was priceless, waiting to be recognized by those who truly saw him.